Hey everybody, you got the wingman here. Thanks for joining me today. You know, for many people who watch this channel, if given the choice of what type of RV to buy, if money were no object, they'd probably choose a motorhome. Generally speaking, motorhomes are more expensive than towables, but when you add in the cost of a vehicle to tow your towable, the numbers get a whole lot closer. Now, as more and more Americans are making their decisions about upcoming retirement, many are considering buying a motorhome. So I thought it might be a good idea to bring up one of my go-to experts so we can well, so we can talk about them from sort of a, I don't know, high level and see where the conversation goes. So Jock, if somebody has not uh, met you yet, and what, you know, they're gonna call you. Get, what's the spiel so you can give it one time instead of a hundred times? Give, give me the 30 second, 45 second Jock Milton story, background. Well, I've been in the RV industry since I was 17. I started uh, right out of high school, started washing campers, and then after that, briefly uh, went in the shop and worked on them for a little while, travel trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Then after that, I got in the towable side on sales and uh, been on the sales floor for roughly two and a half, three years with that. And then after I did that, I switched over to a different dealership. And when I did, I went to strictly motorhome sales. And I've been doing that for over the last 14 years. Wow. So it's been, it's been good. So you know everything about motorhomes and pretty much, I mean... I, I wouldn't say everything, but I'd like to, if I don't, I'll uh, try to get the right answer. But I, I, I know a fair amount, that's for sure. Well, I know there are a lot of people that are going to watch this segment and that are interested in motorhomes. They may, uh, you know, they, they may want one or they may be afraid of them. And I just thought that th this conversation could kind of, you know, lay the groundwork, if you will. Not if somebody, you know, maybe somebody can say, you know what, I definitely don't want a motorhome, but hey, that sounds pretty cool. What... Obviously, you like to sell a motorhome, but what are some of the things that people come and look for there? What, what, help me out if I'm just in the beginning stages of, of uh, looking at motorhome. Well, people look for them for all different reasons, whether it be work, uh, different times of their life, whether it be kids, grandkids, uh, just a couple alone. Um, so different reasons for different things. Um, and it, quite often that actually drives trade. Uh, so. People, you know, start with a travel trailer and then sometimes go up to a, you know, fifth wheel and then on and so forth until they get into the motorhome side. And then it starts at, you know, class, you know, C, then it goes up to an A. And sometimes as they get older, it goes back down to a beat van. So you just never know where it'll take you. Uh, but when I first meet somebody, I just, you know, briefly ask them questions. And I always tell people, I'm not trying to be nosy and know your life story, but it helps me navigate and know where I should start to help them along the way, try to find the right you know, avenue to take to get to what fits their needs the best. Um, and of course, if they disagree, then we'll go a different route. But I, I'd at least like to show them what might work for them. So you're, you're not trying to sell them a partic particular unit that may have been sitting on the lot. You really are trying to, to fit their needs. Do most people end up buying what they thought they were going to end up, you know, buy when they walk in or do they change their mind? Walk me through that process. It's hard to say. I would say somewhere around 50, 50, um, which is, you know, most customers when they, when they come in, they think that's probably, you know, rare to hear just being 50, 50, but it is true. A lot of times people come in and, you know, um, I had just had it last week, uh, elderly couple came in, um, early eighties and they just knew they wanted to be van, just, uh, easy to maneuver and, you know, this and that, no, not really want to bring many people with them, but they quickly realized the cost and what fit their needs better was a small B plus that I had just took it in on trade. Um, it wasn't even stocked in yet. Um, I was able to talk to the previous owner that I took it in on trade and have them talk to that customer as well. And because the first thing we wanted, they wanted to know was why was it traded? And, and I get that, you know, you're buying a expensive, you know, high ticket sale item and with that being said, somebody trade something with 3,000 miles, you just want to make sure, you know, what was their reason? And I, and I get that. It would throw up a flag with me as well. Um, but once I told him the reason why he traded and he did as well, um, they quickly fell in love with the one they, you know, they came in to not see. But the one they came in to see was more money, um, way smaller than they anticipated. Uh, it looks good on paper, but when you start thinking about truly using it on a, you know, weekend or a week to week basis, it, it you know, it, it could fit differently than what you anticipate just off of a screen and, you know, uh, books and catalogs. So 
a lot of my customers, they come in and they say, look, we got to see it in person. And I totally get that. But having somebody to walk through and, and kind of tell you, tell you, you know, hey, look, I've heard this from previous customers. Because even me, myself, I've done this since I was 17. I'm, you know, 35. But I don't use them like they do. And so I try to learn from my customers. I mean, I have customers that's done this, you know, longer than I've been alive. Um, so I, I, even though I've been in the industry, I like to think a little while, um, there's people that you definitely, you know, know way more than I do and use them in a totally different manner than, you know, than I do. Um, so I learn from them and I try to share that with my customers as well. So it's more than just my knowledge. It's people that's been doing it a long time. So I try to pick up from what they tell me and then try to help that next customer from what they learn. Um, by taking a purchase that was wrong or buying too small or buying too big, uh, it just it just never never know where I'm going to take them until I ask a series of questions and then try to lead them down the right road. But the other 50% that would buy just what they anticipated on would be um, probably, whether it be an internet lead, um, meaning somebody see something on the website, click for best price and, you know, just fly in or, or come in to pick it up. That's the person I really, you know, sometimes don't get to... Uh, do the full demo, if you will, from start to finish. And meeting them at the front door at Berryland is a little different than typing on a keyboard, you know, people not knowing who you are, which I'm sure this is helpful with that. Well, let me, let me ask you, Jock, uh, it would seem to me that, you know, if you go on the internet and look for a motorhome, there's no shortage of motorhomes out there, and, they, and almost all of them look pretty on paper or on the internet, you know, the pictures, but when you actually get there, it's a, it's a different story. So that's why I'm thinking there's quite a few buyers that think they want a class A, for example, and when they and they, they find one, I like that. They go out and it's like, that, that's why it's so important to see a bunch of units. You know, I was just there at Berryland not long ago and you, you got everything. I mean, so there's a lot of stuff to, to walk through to, I guess, weed out the stuff that, that I don't want. Is that? Sometimes it does, honestly. Sometimes looking at so many, um, it kind of muddies the water. It's a fine line in, uh, what I mean by that is that uh, two, three weeks ago, I just had a different customer from Texas come over, um, have the fifth wheel in a truck. Um, here at Berryland, we started off at a, as a car lot many, many years ago. Mr. Mike did, the owner, and uh, now he's taking it where we are now. So we still have that car lot. So we're able to take in vehicle trades as well. So they drove over from Texas for me to give them a value on the tow vehicle as well as the you know um, fifth wheel they were going to trade on a motorhome. They decided, you know, the stage of their life, they was tired of hooking and unhooking, just wanted to turn key and hit buttons. So they told them, come on over. We set up a date. They drove over. Uh, they had a, two or three picked out, and they also asked me to pick out a few more that they may not have knew of that was similar. So I did. I had a little list in my pocket on a little Post-it note, a little cheat sheet, um, just to kind of help with time since I made the travel over. And when I went through it, I started with the ones I wanted to see, and then I added to it from there. Um, but like they said, you know, sometimes you have so many options that it's a bad thing. And I said, well, I'd rather have more than one that you like than none that you like, which is, you know, a true statement, but those customers are still, you know, kind of on the line dancing with what fits their, you know, mold the best. But again, I would rather have more of a, you know, boxes checked than less of the boxes checked. So what I mean by that is, is Customers come in, and I always tell them, you're never going to find the RV, whether it be travel trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome, that's going to fit the need or want 100%. You have to find the one that's going to fit the best, whether it be 90% to your liking or you know 70% to your liking. You just got to call the rest that's under that because you'll never find the one that's absolutely perfect. Even if you think you do, by the time you get it home, you'll quickly realize that you wish this was changed or that was changed. But again, um, they're they're made for a you know a mass you know population, and mm -hmm. they're not individually made for one specific person. Well, even with that said, you build a custom house. By the time you move in, if there's already something, you would have changed in that. So that's just life. But um, but that's the only customer I would say that would truly buy what they originally anticipated is because they don't really sometimes get the full experience. And I, I mean, sometimes they, you know, do so much research, two or three years worth, and they know more about the product than I do, which I'm perfectly fine with. Um, you know, but I, at the end of the day, they know more about the product. They may not know about, you know, Berryland. You know, they may not know about the dealership. They may not know about the service side. So there's still a lot to be learned in that relationship, I feel, is, is very, very important.
I'll tell you, every person I've ever visited with, everyone who's bought a motorhome through Barry Land Campers with Jock Milton tells me they do it again. You know what? Many will do it again. For first-time motorhome buyers, heck, for any RV buyers, really, what Jock said is so true. There are no perfect RVs. There's not. And if you think you've got the perfect RV, motorhome, travel trailer, well, you know what? It may not be quite so perfect when you move into the next phase of your RV life. Essentially, if you find an RV that fits 80 to 90% of what's on your wish list, I say that you're getting pretty close to making the best decision possible. If you're considering buying a motorhome, I hope that you'll give Jock a call and y'all visit. They sell the best brands of coaches at Berryland, from class B's to C's and big old class A gas and diesel pushers. I think you'll enjoy their honest, straightforward way of doing business. A link to Berryland as well as Jock's contact info is in the description down below.